Thanks, Mike. Um, glad to be here. And um, hoping for some slides. Here we go. So um, I spent uh, quite a few years designing uh, green buildings uh, and the limitation to designing uh, green buildings, even though we're quite successful at it. And we're, in fact, uh, Mike's new office is going to be a, a carbon neutral building that I've designed uh, for John Robinson out at UBC. Um, uh, at the moment, I'm focused on how much more we can do if, if, if we actually look at the issues of sustainability around, um, around cities, at the city and community scale. Uh, and I have a very short presentation here that focuses on uh, carbon uh, as, as the issue, uh, and just looking at uh, what we can do with the structure of cities to, to address uh, uh, the carbon impact. So this chart shows um, one measure, gasoline consumption uh, of carbon uh, related to emissions in cities on the y-axis and on the x-axis, the density of cities. So the point here is that um, uh, the denser the city, the better. The more mixed use uh, uh, there is in a city, the better. Uh, the more opportunity there is to take transit and walk, uh, which comes from that density, uh, the better. Uh, and that's the underpinning uh, the discussion that uh, I would like to bring. And of course, you've heard from a couple of speakers this curve, um, uh, this curve showing how much uh, density we are going to be putting in our cities globally and, and how in, in the, over the next 30 years and uh, how much we have to do to, to be a part of that. Uh, transportation uh, is a focus for me uh, as, as, as a component of how cities are structured uh, in terms of uh, carbon issues. So whilst many North American and, and now unfortunately uh, global cities uh, uh, embrace uh, the construction of highways and methods of transportation that are uh, more diversified uh, and, and widespread, uh, the carbon impact of that is enormous. And you might compare that to say cities like Vancouver or Oslo or Vienna or, or even Portland or New York uh, with a much lower carbon profile that have a much different uh, type of, uh, of, uh, 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 of transportation system. And as I recall, um, uh, uh, we you probably noticed there's a, a, an acute lack of uh, highway infrastructure in, in central Vancouver. And uh, Mayor Harcourt and, and uh, mayors before him, uh, we, we made a conscious choice in 1966, was it, to, to stop the freeway. And you can go and see at the end of the Dunsmuir Viaduct, not far from here, the point at which the freeway construction was about to destroy a uh, Chinese uh, neighborhood that the cities of, citizens of Vancouver decided no freeway. And as a result, I think we have uh, today uh, a great city that's uh, uh, easy to move around in, uh, even without the cities, that has a carbon profile that is stunningly different from uh, other cities in North America that are, have wider transportation. Uh, this chart shows um, tons of GHG per capita per year uh, for typical cities. Uh, and mostly I speak in, in North America, so, so these are by and large North American cities. You'll see down uh, Vancouver there at, uh, at about five tons per year. Uh, again, based on compact, uh, lack of freeways, good transportation infrastructure, and a walking city uh, uh, where, where you can walk to and from work if you locate uh, strategically. But you can look at the, that uh, model and you can see it uh, in all the low carbon cities. Uh, may, there are many cities, uh, Oslo, Vienna, Barcelona, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, three and four tons uh, per person per year uh, as, as their emissions profile and compare that obviously dramatically with uh, uh, cities like uh, like Toronto uh, or Houston uh, and others. So this is the challenge: uh, is, is to get down there. Uh, um, uh, remember that the globe has the ability to uh, to withstand uh, uh, somewhere between one or two tons per capita, absorb it and deal with it per capita uh, at a, a, a global uh, peak peak population of about. Uh, of about, I, I was, I've been using 8.5 billion. I'm, I'm disturbed to hear Mike say 9 billion, so, uh, uh, but the models are diff differ, I guess. So we've got to, even today, we have to take Vancouver from four down to, to two, two, or four, five down to two or so if, if we want to be part of the, the long term solution. Um, so this is an image of, of, of Vancouver uh, showing how in, uh, in 19. Uh, 1990, we had a city on, on the top here with a, a, a emissions per ton of, of about six, and today, through densification uh, in the lower piece, uh, uh, more people living and walking and, and working downtown. Uh, that densification ha has yielded a, a significant reduction in carbon uh, for, for, for Vancouver alone, uh, uh, it just in the, in, the, in the downtown core. Uh, and um, uh, uh, 
what, at the heart of uh, a further change, further improvement, is, is reconsidering the zoning. Um, City of Vancouver zoning map is much like uh, all North American cities and unfortunately uh, much like the zoning that's being proposed in, in, in Asia for new cities. Uh, we have a central a business district uh, shown in the darker colors there that's primarily office and then we have uh, mid-rise uh, uh, and low-rise uh, mixed-use uh, residential areas uh, surrounding that. We have an industrial area there in blue, uh, and then we have this vast uh, sea of, uh, of single-family residents shown uh, without color around it. Um, uh, and you can look at, these are the models that were uh, emerged out of uh, city planning uh, post-war uh, when, when planning departments were set up uh, all, over, all over the Western world uh, to deal with growth and change. Uh, and, they, and they largely thought this was the right thing uh, to do, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, there's your office district and we put all the offices together and everybody's comfortable with that and there's where you, you live uh, out there in your houses and, and there's over there's where you shop and there's where the, the factories are. Uh, but it's the wrong model today uh, and unfortunately it's going to take a Herculean effort to, to change uh, zoning pa patterns of zoning in, in the Western world because there's so many entrenched positions there. Uh, but once again uh, uh, the models are there in Vancouver. Um, um, these charts show the difference in emissions profiles related to uh, related to the use uh, to, to density. Uh, on the left, you have uh, uh, suburbs showing obviously vehicular driver emissions uh, uh, because people have to drive everywhere to get anything. Uh, uh, very high uh, levels of uh, uh, of carbon from those sources. Whereas on on the right, uh, in a downtown high risk district, you see people walking, uh, no carbon, taking transit, uh, uh, using bikes. Um, uh, uh, being passengers in cities. And, and, and so this combination of density and the way you structure your cities uh, uh, really makes a, a huge difference. Today, if you look at uh, what makes up uh, Vancouver's carbon profile uh, on a per capita basis, I said an average of about five and a half, you can see that um, uh, people living in different parts of the city have different emissions profiles. The people who live downtown uh, in the purple area there, uh, and we have this well-developed West End, and we have new emerging areas in, in False Creek and on Coal Harbor, great residential districts. These people are primarily walking to and from work. And uh, uh, they also happen to live in, um, by and large, um, uh, smaller buildings, uh, they live in condos, uh, they, uh, they can walk to shop, they can walk to, uh, to entertainment. Uh, so these are the citizens of the future, uh, 1.5 tons per year uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a wonderful thing. Um, uh, in the mid-rise areas around it, mixed-use area, well serviced by transit in orange here, three tons. Uh, and in the, uh, the single-family residences, six tons per year. Uh, and again, in a North American context, that's 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 pretty good, uh, but but it could it could be improved, um, and so uh, so we proposed and, and discussed with the city, and, and they're working on zoning that follows uh, some of these ideas. They're not our ideas. We, we were just emphasizing them to to other people um, that um, we should actually take that model and change it, and we should build a nodal city uh, of dense mixed-use development around transit infrastructure. Uh, and so you can look at the major transit arterials in Vancouver, and you can see a, a map here, uh, the possibility that we could have uh, maybe, uh, maybe 20 or 25 nodes in the city uh, around key transit crossroads, and in those we could have uh, opportunities to work, opportunities to shop, opportunities to, uh, to, to have entertainment, and you'll see the inner circles there, the orange ones, they're actually walking dimensions. Uh, so 400 meter in a radius is a comfortable, 500 meters is a comfortable walking distance. Uh, and then an area outside of that, some people will walk sometimes uh, for, for, uh, for, for, uh, for services or, or retail or shopping. So, so you can see in, in a map like that, if you take this kind of nodal approach and, and were to rezone the city based on that, you would, you would capture maybe a 25% of the geographic, or 50% or of the geographic area of the city and uh, much of the future population. So this is a, a diagram that comes from a study that we, uh, that we did of the New Canada line that's just uh, been put in, uh, suggesting that each of those uh, stations should become the focus for uh, mixed use, uh, high density uh, development, and the city's uh, moving in this direction. Places where villages can grow up around district energy systems, which are the most efficient method of, of heating and cooling and, and moving energy around, uh, uh, rather than distributed systems, uh, uh, district energy systems uh, based on 
renewable resources in the future uh, uh, can work well in mixed-use nodes because we can take heat energy from retail and move it to apartments in the evenings and we can take heat energy that's created in uh, offices and move them uh, again to the right uh, so we can move them around in kind of district loops but there are also places where villages can can grow up where uh, you know if I live at the edge of this village in my single-family residence I can my children can move into medium-rise uh, or high-rise uh, uh, just a short walk away and, and my uh, my parents can be in a senior's home nearby and then there's a school and a park and, and, and retail and, and so on around them so this nodal idea rather than uh, the, rather than the uh, the map I showed to you uh, to begin with and then mixed-use development uh, should be located around transit this is uh, I'm only showing you two two images of buildings that we've done but this is a project called crossroads at Camby and Broadway across from City Hall that's exactly one-third residential one-third retail and one-third office uh, and when designed uh, it was really designed to, to, to address some of these things. Um, it's a great business model because it's a mixed, mixed, uh, mixed risk. Uh, when designed, it had the lowest parking ratio uh, of any building proposed along the Canby corridor, uh, or sorry, the Broadway corridor, in an attempt to share uh, parking spaces. I'm, I'm discussing parking as, a, as a symptomatic of, of change. Uh, and today, the bottom level of that parking, fully one-third of the parking that was planned in this lowest ever parking uh, uh, ratio uh, of a building is, is unused. Uh, nobody goes down there. Uh, uh, proof, proof is that people are walking. They're walking to and from this building and the, and the facilities that are there. They might be living and working there. They might be, uh, they might be living and shopping there. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it totally changes, uh, again, the carbon footprint of, of these people and has a huge impact on the city. At another node uh, that's developing now around the Canada line where the city is supporting uh, higher mixed use density, um, uh, a much more aggressive approach, and this will probably have a district energy system, uh, a pattern for the future. And there's uh, and there's planned development here in the four parcels around that, all within walking distance of that node. There's uh, planned density of around uh, three million square feet. Uh, again, all there's a great transit station there. It connects to the airport, connects to downtown, uh, and it's a place where you should uh, pile on mixed use development in a very efficient manner. Uh, and this is an image of of, of the project that we're working on called Marine Gateway, which has, has again, uh, one-third residential, half uh, rental, half uh, condo. Uh, it has uh, one-third office and one-third retail. Uh, but it also includes entertainment this time, so that uh, there's a movie theaters there, uh, there's a daycare there. Uh, there's all kinds of things that, uh, that would allow people to uh, take transit and enjoy living without, uh, at the same time, reducing their carbon impact. In parallel with this, of course, the city of Vancouver is changing the bylaws related to the construction of buildings. So these will be extremely energy efficient buildings as we're required to do. So uh, when you look at the huge carbon impact of both changing building patterns, uh, legislated, uh, 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 and uh, transportation patterns, opportunistic based on, uh, on the location, uh, you see a, a very dramatic uh, impact uh, going forward. So what would our GF GHG footprint look like in the future based on this? Well, assuming that, um, assuming that transportation modes change, uh, that buildings get better, uh, the average carbon footprint for Vancouverites, if you were to take this approach, uh, could be reduced significantly, uh, like half uh, from the present, uh, down from five to, to two and a half. And it looks like this. Downtown, the, uh, uh, the, the previously very good at one and a half tons per year, they're, they're living now in renovated and improved buildings. Uh, so they're down at one ton. The, uh, the mixed uh, um, uh, uh, Kitsilano and Broadway type people, they now, they don't have to go downtown to work anymore. There's now lots of offices on the Broadway corridor and there's new entertainment facilities along Broadway and along the transit corridor. So they have gone from three to two. And even the single family residents in the gray area, there, uh, many of them can now walk to shops and, and entertainment and even places of work on these transit nodes. So even though they may choose to remain in their single family residences, they can uh, change their patterns and Vancouver can drop from uh, the present five tons uh, to, to two and a half tons. And it looks like this. Um, so the status quo, five tons, um, if we improve our buildings and our bylaws as the city's doing, uh, we can get to uh, say three and a half tons over the 25 years it takes to renovate most of the buildings or build new in the city. Uh, but we can get to half, two and a half tons if we adopt a, a changed approach to zoning, build the transit infrastructure and, and, uh, and build these nodes of development around them.